Are you having a hard time figuring out what to get Dad for Father's Day? You should check out Row One Brand's Vintage Pictorum Gallery. They have America's best sports art. With over 7,200 historic sports prints, you're assured to find something unique for Dad this Father's Day. Instead of a boring old tie, get him a historic baseball photo taken by Henry High Sandum at the historic Polo Ground Stadium in New York City during the 1894 Temple Cup. Or, if he's an NFL buff, check out the 1963 vintage NFL poster. These are so good looking that you'll be amazed how they turn out. Shop now at sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one and save 15% off your order. You know, I think it was only up to about a few years ago that I believed that I knew about who invented the game of baseball. It was taught to us in school. It was pounded in our heads. We knew the name of the man that did it. Well, maybe that is not so correct. I learned a couple years ago. Well, we're going to try to find out who did invent the game of baseball. And that study's coming up in just a moment. My name's Darren Hayes, and I know you've heard me on the Pigskin Dispatch talking about football history for years. Well, now I'm on a new mission, a quest to find sports history in other sports as well as football by learning through the jerseys and the apparel and the gear that the players wore and the franchises supplied their teams. It's an educational trip, and I'm taking you with me day by day, player by player, uniform by uniform, the Sports Jersey Dispatch. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hello, my sporting friends. This is Darren Hayes of Sports Jersey Dispatch, and welcome once again to the Pigpen, your portal to positive sports history. And we all are love sports history. We listen to it. We talk about it. We read about it. And you know, we, we try to live it out as much as we can and just appreciate the great history that's happened in sports. Well, a lot of times that ties into real world history, you know, outside of sports. And I want to start off by just telling a little bit of story about that. Now, we all know about the Civil War that, you know, happened, uh, started in 1861. And in particular, uh, Friday, April 12th, 1861. And the very first shot of the Civil War was fought. You know, it was a mortar shell fired from Fort Johnson in Charleston, South Carolina, over Fort Sumter, which is out towards the ocean. Uh, You know, there's a a bay of mixed of fresh water and salt water. There are two rivers feed into that and they spill out into the ocean. Fort Sumter's out on the ocean side. Fort Johnson's closer to the land side. And there were some, you know, fired shots uh, from the Virginian secessionist, supposedly Edmund Ruffin, claimed to have fired the first shot. We're not really sure if it was him or not. There's some claims of some other uh, rebels that uh, claimed that they fired the first shot. Inconsequential. What we really want to talk about here, who's who returned fire or fired the first shot on the Union side? Well, we know that about 7 a.m. from Fort Sumter, the Union soldiers held that uh, garrison, uh, there was a Commander Anderson gave the order for Sumner's guns to begin firing in reply. And that first shot by a Union officer was fired by his second in command. A guy named Abner, Captain Abner. And it just so happens to be his last name was Doubleday. Yeah, you got it. Abner Doubleday. The guy that when we were kids were told that he's a guy that invented baseball. So he fired the first shot for the Union side in the Civil War. Pretty interesting. It's also interesting to have learned and to dive into this that Abner Doubleday did not invent baseball. It's a proven fact. It's a story that came out some 15 years after he passed away. And it's a kind of an interesting story. And that's sort of going to be our topic today of something that uh, I want to little, learn a little bit about. You know, if Abner Doubleday didn't invent baseball like I grew up believing, then who exactly did? So one place that I started, I came across an article 
on NPR from uh, 2011. And, you know, it was uh, written about a gentleman named John Thorne, a baseball historian that wrote a book titled The Baseball in the Garden of Eden by John Thorne. Uh, Simon & Schuster was the publisher. And just a couple excerpts from this NPR article give me some of the answers that maybe I'm looking for, maybe I'm not. Now, he says there's just a couple claims uh, to baseball. First of all, the article says that in 1903, a British sports writer named Henry Chadwick published an article speculating that baseball derived from a British game called Rounders. And this guy, Chadwick, claimed that he played it back in England when he was a kid, so sometime in the 19th century. Interesting. Baseball executive Albert Spaulding goes on to say he disagrees with that. He, he, Spaulding says it's fundamentally an American sport and began on American soil. So to settle the matter, I guess they ha- headed a commission by Abraham Mills, a fourth president of the National League of Professional Baseball Clubs, and the commission, which also had six other sports executives, labored for over three years and they're the ones that declared that Abner Doubleday invented, invented baseball. And this was all based on this gentleman that was a coal miner from Colorado that told a story when he was a kid that Abner Doubleday came to them when they were playing on the playground. And Abner Doubleday came up with these rules and drew them in the, the sand of the sand lot and you know with a stick and showed the the kids how to play the game and that's where baseball came about and this guy declared that swore testimony to this commission of six men headed by abraham mills back in the early 20th century now in the book that we talked about by john thorne he says that you know this really didn't happen This was, for some reason, they don't know why this gentleman from Colorado, this miner, decided to tell that story. And he says that baseball was played way before this claim of Admiral Doubleday inventing it. Different variations of the game, he says. There was, uh, all across the country, there was a style of play in New York, and there was a style of play in Philadelphia, one in Massachusetts, and some other areas of the country, each having their own style of playing a game that's sort of similar to the game of baseball, but not quite. Some of them didn't have baselines. Some of them, you know, the runners could run in any direction just to get on base. They could run out in the outfield. They could run, you know, wherever they wanted to. There was no uh, foul territory, so the batters could hit the ball anywhere. Um, So it came down to, he claims in the book, to be played more of the New York style. And not that it was the most fun style or the the best style, but that's the one that seemed to be the most popular because that's where people were at, was in New York, and that came on. Not so sure about that. It's not, it's convincing. It sounds good. It definitely, you know, predates the Abner Doubleday theory. It uh, probably predates the theory of the game of rounders where the guy played, you know, in the uh, mid-19th century. It, but they're, they're saying it goes back even further than that. There's talk of games being played in the 1700s, uh, the early 1800s. And it was uh, an opportunity for gamblers to play. And so that's why they sort of went with that New York style of game, like we said, you know, because it had innings. Uh, it was regimented and people had to run in certain areas and run a certain direction around the bases. And everything was, you know, step, right, step. And gamblers could bet on that to see if they would get hits. <laughs> so, but there was no enclosed field. There was no uh, outfield wall to hit it over. You just hit it and you ran. And if the ball kept going, you kept going. And that's the way it was. And people gambled on that. Gambling's been around for, it's probably the second oldest profession <laughs> in the world. So it's interesting. So I'm not sure if I get the answer to my question of who invented baseball. I think possibly from what I'm gathering, there was a bunch of different games that were similar. 
And I think, you know, I think the game of rounders came into it. I think these games in New York and Massachusetts and Philadelphia and all parts elsewhere, I think they were a part of it. I don't think Abner Doubleday was a part of it. But somehow these came together into these rules. And probably the most plausible one is what Thorne says with that New York style of play and the gambling. And it turned into baseball. And pretty soon... They started paying people. They did it in Cincinnati with the Red Stockings. We, you know, we've talked about it a couple times here on our origin stories. Cincinnati Red Stockings, Cincinnati Reds origin story. And you know, Harry Wright and uh, you know paying his players first professional team at fifty-seven and zero. So it's interesting, and I don't know that we know the answer. It's not as cut and dried as you know Naismith inventing basketball or or camp and. Uh, Burnside and uh, McGill inventing American football. You know, uh, the school of rugby inventing rugby. It's not as cut and dried in that. And that's what sort of brings that intrigue to the game of baseball. It's a mystery wrapped in an enigma on the origin of baseball. But God, do we love that game. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope you tune back with us next time for some more great sports history. Until that time. Have a great Sports History Day. Sorry, but my pitching coach just called timeout and he's coming out to the mound. I think I'm going to get yanked for a reliever. We'll see you back tomorrow for some more great sports history on Sports Jersey Dispatch Podcast. We invite you to check out our websites, jerseydispatch.com and pigskindispatch.com. Not only see the daily sports history, but to experience the preservation of great events and people that play the games. Find us on Pigskin Dispatch. It's also on social media outlets of Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and don't forget the Pigskin Dispatch YouTube channel. Get all your daily sports history. Pigskin Dispatch is happy to be associated with the Sports History Network, the sports headquarters of yesteryear, found at sportshistorynetwork.com. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. At the Sports History Network, we're all about sports yesteryear, and so we're so pleased to introduce you to Row One, an online memorabilia gallery and shop that brings your sports history to life anywhere. The Row One Gallery includes over 5,200 gorgeously reproduced prints of team posters, game program covers, game tickets, advertisements, and more in baseball, pro and college football, pro and college basketball, and more. And any gallery item may be printed in a variety of sizes on wood, metal, canvas, acrylic, or poster paper. And in Row One Shop, check out the thousands more of unique Unique items with a retro and historical designs dating back to 1876, including t-shirts, long sleeve shirts, phone cases, mugs, blankets, pillows, towels, and even shower curtains. Go to sportshistorynetwork.com, R-O-W number one, for access to the full Row One catalog and for gallery prints and gift items. Plus, get a 15% discount off all prints on the Row One Pictorum Gallery with coupon code SHN15. Follow the link on the show notes.